God wasted all of his anger on Christ that at the cross, the beloved Son of God, God would turn his face from his Son. That was us on that cross, you and me. And now we come to the reality that God will not be angry with us again. Now we are in a privileged position of receiving his mercy. And more than his mercy, we can now receive grace which is we are receiving a favor that we do not deserve. And I say this with all amounts of boldness because I believe it with my whole heart that God is not angry with me. No matter where I find myself, He is ready to lift me from that place. Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Owe McMahon. It is a delight to have you back watching today's video. In today's video, I'm speaking about the fact that God is not angry with you Instead, God loves you. This video is not for everyone, but if you feel or believe that God is angry with you and you are on this straight meal of trial and error with God, that on your good days, the day you feel like you've done noble things, the day you feel like you've done something good, you feel like God loves you. But on the days that you feel like you failed, you fumbled, you feel like God is angry with you, and maybe he's about to release a stone from heaven on your head, or he's about to rain, stony rain or storm to strike you or something, God is not angry with you. And that is the reminder that I want to give you in today's video. There is a story about a son and a father. Now, this son went to his father, the audacity, to tell the father, give me my inheritance while the father was alive. And it is so crazy that this son would go to ask the father give me my inheritance it shows a picture of the son telling the father i want you to die oh god just die and let me get my inheritance or something and the father obliged he gave him his inheritance and he went to a far country wasted everything that the father gave him wasted all his life all his inheritance and then when he was left with nothing he found himself eating the food that was given to people. At this point, I believe this story is familiar. It is a biblical story. Now, Jesus told this parable about this prodigal son, whom later, when he found himself, he realized himself, he said, in my father's house, look at the servants in my father's house are eating better. And I'm eating the food of pigs. Well, he started telling himself this tale that he would come to tell the father, Oh, I am sorry before heaven and, you know, man, I am not worthy to be your son and all of that. But unbeknownst to him that the father at home was not angry with him because the picture in his head is that my father is really angry with me. I cannot go back home. But then he someone courage and said, well, even if he's angry with me, I will go to him and tell him I'm not even worthy to be your son. I know I've done the worst. I know I've done something I was never ever supposed to do so forgive me before heaven and on earth but before this son could even go back to tell his tale when the father saw him from afar you can find this story in luke chapter 15 the father was the one who ran first now tell me if that is not a picture of love this is the son that hurt the father but when he came back the father was waiting for him not just waiting the father ran towards him, hugged him, kissed him, threw a party for him. Which father can do this? Jesus was telling us about God, that God is not angry with you and me because we sin. That God is not angry with you and me because we fall away. Because sinning as a human being is like a sheep that falls into a pit and is helpless. So we find ourselves helpless in a situation whereby we are bankrupt. We cannot do good even if we try. We cannot serve God and honor God even if we try on our strength. So stepping onto this treadmill, trying to please God, trying to make it up to God, that was a place that I found myself in my walk with God. And I felt like God was angry with me in my bad days. And in my good days, I feel this pride. Oh, wow. God should be very proud of me. But God is so consistent that that did not represent his love for me. God's love is constant. It remains the same no matter the season of my life. That is why the scripture says that God is faithful even when I am not, even when I disobey. 
But that doesn't mean that it gives me a leverage to keep on disobeying God. No, it does not. But God will not change who he is because of how fickle I am. If you can get that, that is beautiful to grab. God will not change who he is because of who I tend to be. So the reality is that God is not angry with you. And scripture says in Isaiah, just as I swore in the time of Noah that I would never again let a flood cover the earth, so now I swear that I will never again be angry and punish you. For the mountains may move and the hills disappear, but even then my faithful love for you will remain. My covenant of blessing will never be broken, says the Lord who has mercy on you. This scripture becomes true to you that God will never be angry and punish you. And he brought this analogy, comparing it to the time of Noah, which if you have read your Bible, you realize that God destroyed the whole world and saved Noah and his family alone. And God said, I will never do this again. And he gave us a sign through the rainbow. So when the rainbow shows, it is a sign for us to remember the covenant of God that God will never destroy the world again by flood. And now God tells you, just like in the days of Noah, I am telling you, I'm giving you my word, I will never be angry with you and punish you. I will never be angry with you and destroy you. So if you're feeling like God is angry with me, God will destroy me, nothing good will come out of my life, you're not expecting any good from God, you're only expecting something bad because you feel like he's angry. Because when your dad or your mom or anyone you know is angry with you, you know that the expectation of whatever you're going to get from them is what you see. Because they are angry with you. But God said, I will never be angry with you and punish you. Which is a picture of him also saying, I will never punish you out of anger. And this is true why Isaiah 53 talked about Christ. The too good to be true story. The one who did not deserve to die, who gave himself for us. The Lamb of God who had believed a report to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed that God will send his son into a broken and sinful world to save us. Now, because Jesus died at the cross, he absorbed all of God's anger. And the way I put it when I was writing this down is that God wasted his anger on Christ. God wasted all of his anger on Christ. That at the cross, the beloved son of God, God would turn his face from his son. That was us on that cross, you and me. Jesus took our place. He replaced us, the divine substitution. He went to the cross and hung on the cross as a symbol of a cause. Someone that is hung on the cross is as a result of being caused, which is God is angry at that person. And Jesus took all of God's anger, absorbed it, and God wasted all, his, all of his anger on Christ. And now we come to the reality that God will not be angry with us again. Now we are in a privileged position of receiving his mercy. And more than his mercy, we can now receive grace, which is we are receiving a favor that we do not deserve. His mercy has covered for all our sins. Christ took our place. And his grace is us receiving the life that we do not deserve, the good things that we do not deserve. And I want you to open your heart and open your mind to the grace of God through Christ Jesus, knowing that God is not angry with you. And I say this with all amounts of boldness, because I believe it with my whole heart, that God is not angry with me. No matter where I find myself, He is ready to lift me from that place. Now, I will read a few scriptures to summarize these points for you. Psalm 103 verse 8 to 11 says, The Lord is compassionate and merciful slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. Now, let's just pause there. He is slow to get angry, but you know what is filled with unfailing love? Mercy. He will not constantly accuse us nor remain angry forever. He does not punish us for all our sins. He does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. For his unfailing love toward those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. Now, this is what actually messed with my brain. I'm like, the height of the heaven to the head cannot be measured. Like, it, it, it's so large. So the Bible says this is how massive, 
This is how great the love of God is for you and me. This is how great the mercy of God is for you and me. This is how great that God is saying the anger is just little. And all this anger he has already wasted on Christ Jesus. And he says, you know what you're going to enjoy? My mercy, my unfailing love. Now, this puts me in a position of gratitude. And again, he said, verse 12, He has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. Wow. This picture is messing with my brain. Because I was thinking that when I commit sin, that God is angry with me and nothing good will come from God to me. And scripture is telling me that God has removed my sin as far as the east. Is from the west. The picture I got there is that the east can never meet the west. <laughs> if I spread my two arms, they can never meet each other. So it means the way Christ has removed my sins through his work at the cross, my sin can never meet me because he paid for all of it. And that is why the song that we sing says, Jesus paid all and all to him I owe. I have no more work to do. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. Now I just need to step into this loving relationship with him. And know that he is not angry with me. But he loves me. Another scripture says. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. We were not righteous when Christ died. None of us accepted or knew God when he died for us. None of us solicited for the love of God when he decided to send his son. To die for us, we were still in our sins, wallowing. And God says, I love you. Again, in 1 John chapter 4, verse 10, it says, God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away of our sins. Now, you have to step into this real love. You've been trying to love God. You've been trying on your strength to love God. And when you fail, you feel like God is angry with you. You've not been able to love him like you want to. That is a good heart to have. And Christ is telling you, receive the love I give to you. This is the only way that you can serve God. When you know that he loves you this much, he has removed your sin far from you as the east is from the west. Your sin can never meet you. And his love is as massive as the height of the heaven to the earth. Wow. I just know that God will never be angry with me again. Because he promised so. That he will never be angry with me again. All I will receive from him is love, 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 love. <laughs> All I can receive from God right now is love, 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 love. Yeah, this could sound like it is heresy and all of that to someone. But this is the truth of the scriptures. And what would this love become to us when we receive it like this? It makes us grateful to God. Second Corinthians chapter 5, scripture says that because he loved us this much, his love now compels us to love him. Now, the picture that came to my mind is, do you wake up every morning to someone that you know really loves you and plan, I'm about to break this person's heart. I'm about to smash this person's heart on a stone. If you do that, it means you have not really received that love because there's no way you receive love. It melts your heart. It makes you grateful. It makes you feel privileged. This amazing person, God loves me this much. I did not expect he could love me. I did not know that he could love me. I did not know that he even cared that much. Coming to know that he does. It doesn't make me want to go run out and go and sin. Let me go and sin now because he loves me. No. It makes me say, I love you back. I love you back. How can I please you when I wake up? How can I please you with my life? Because you love me, I don't have to prove myself to you. I don't have to do anything to prove to deserve your love. You already love me. You poured this love out in full measure. The only thing I need to do is, how can I receive more of this love every day that I wake up? So the scripture says in Second Corinthians that the love of God compels us. Now we owe everything we are and everything we have to him. And this is the beauty of knowing that God is not angry with you. But God loves you. Thank you so much for watching today's video. And I, I believe, I hope that this video 
is a blessing to you and it will set your heart right from the place of feeling like God is angry with you and is about to destroy your life and is about to bring some bad news to your life. No, it's not. And this will heal your heart of all the pain that religion might have given you. This will heal your heart of all the mess that has been poured into your brain by wrong belief and wrong teaching. Thank you for watching and look forward for my next video. Thank you and God bless you. Bye-bye.